One of the questions that I get asked most frequently on Instagram and YouTube is what type of gear I use and what settings I use when I'm shooting sports videos. So today I'm going to break it all down for you. What's going on? My name is Peter Sorrells. I'm a videographer and editor from Toronto, Canada. And today we're going to go over all of the equipment that I use to shoot sports videos and the settings that I use with that equipment. So without further ado, let's get into it. So my main camera right now is the Sony a7 III. I think that the Sony a7 III is one of the best bang for your buck mirrorless cameras on the market. But if you know about cameras, that's not really much of a secret. The lenses that I used to go with my a7 III specifically for sports are the Sony 70-200 f4G Master. I would get the 70-200 f2.8, but it's like 3,000 Canadian dollars used, which is kind of ridiculous to pay an extra like two grand for a stop. So I stick with the f4 and that's fine. Another main lens that I use, and I'm actually using this lens right now, is the Tamron 28-75 f2.8. This lens is actually super sharp for a zoom lens and it's pretty fast. Now you do zoom it the opposite way that you zoom the Sony lens, which is a little bit weird. But besides that one tiny quirk, this lens is actually beautiful and it's very reasonably priced as well. So this goes in my camera bag no matter what, all the time, any job. And the third lens that I have is the Sony 90mm f2.8 macro. This is a rather new lens I bought and I actually bought it specifically for product videography. But I found that it's actually a really good portrait lens as well and it is super sharp. I love the image that comes out of it, so I make sure to always throw that lens in my bag as well because although it is a prime lens in an unpredictable environment like a sporting event, that prime lens isn't always ideal. It does produce some really great results and I believe in quality over quantity, so when I know that I have enough to get me by in my edit and I want to see if I can get some real gems, the 90 mil goes on and I wait for that perfect moment to snap some really awesome photos or get a great shot. Now although I have the Sony 70-200 f4 as my telephoto lens, another great alternative out there is the Tamron 70-200. 180. This lens is a great budget telephoto lens. It's by Tamron, which is the same company that makes the 28 to 75 that I'm shooting on right now. The only problem I have with this lens is that there's no stabilization in the lens, which for a wider lens like this one, I don't mind that much. But for a telephoto lens, if you're shooting handheld, you need that stabilization. Otherwise, it's going to be a bit shaky. But if you can swing shooting on a monopod or a tripod, then the Tamron 70 to 180 could be a great compromise to that 70-200 f2.8 from Sony, that is just ludicrously expensive. Enough about gear, let's get into the settings that I use when I'm shooting sports videos. So, when I am shooting video, I usually put my camera's picture profile, and I guess this is something that's specific for Sony users, but I'll talk about it. My camera's picture profile is usually HLG3. I love the HLG picture profile on Sony cameras, and without getting into too much detail, I found HLG3 is the profile that gives me the most dynamic range in my image. I actually watched like a full review on all the Sony picture profiles that determined which one gives you the most dynamic range. And I honestly don't know enough about every single profile to talk in detail about that. So I'm going to link a very good video from an amazing YouTuber named Gerald Dundun. If you don't know him, you should go watch him for camera and tech specific stuff. But anyways, a link to his guide for Sony picture profiles is going to be in the description. The other picture profile that I love using, and I specifically use this this one because one I like the look that comes out of it and two I can match this picture profile if my second shooter has one of the Sony APS-C mirrorless cameras that doesn't have HLG picture profiles on it is Cine 4. I love using the Cine 4 picture profile. I set the color to ProRes. I turn the detail all the way down and I think the image that comes out of it is just pretty solid for this camera. So that's my other picture profile that I use all the time. When I'm shooting video I'm always shooting an HD 120 frames per second. Why not shoot 4K you ask? Well 4K on the Sony a7 III only goes to 20 24 frames per second and I never really know what I'm going to be playing back in real time and what moments I'm going to need to slow down because sporting environments are unpredictable and I don't always know what's going to happen. So just to be safe I shoot everything in 120 frames per second. My shutter speed is usually 1 over 250 but every once in a while I will over crank to 1 over 320 or 1 over 400 just to create a little bit less motion blur and make the scene feel a little bit more chaotic and jittery. This over cranking technique is used often in movies for fight scenes for example when there's a lot of fast movement and they want it to feel very frantic so sometimes if I want that same feeling in my sports videos I will over crank past 1 over 250 but usually my shutter speed is 1 over 250 and I shoot 120 frames per second something to note I'm not very afraid of bringing my ISO up on this camera but my ISO usually doesn't go above 3000 when I'm shooting video. I know the a7 III can handle a higher ISO than that, but I just prefer to not bring it that high. I have this thing where like it scares me to bring my ISO too high. I feel like it's just going to introduce too much grain and they're going to have one time where my image is grainier than I would like. So I just try to keep it down whenever possible. 
It isn't always possible, but I try to not bring my ISO over 3000. So let's talk about lens choices. If I'm shooting a workout video and I have a smaller environment, or if I'm shooting a game on a very small court, then I might just put the 28 to 75 on my camera and use that lens for most of the game. The Sony a7 III can punch in and out of APS-C mode, and APS-C mode does give you a 1.6 times crop, so if I really need to zoom in beyond 75 mil on a full frame sensor, I can punch into APS-C mode, which gives me an equivalent of this amount of millimeters because I can't do mental math. But if I'm shooting on a bigger court or if I'm shooting a university game, for example, where the court is longer than your regular high school court, then I'm probably going to be using my 70 to 200 for the whole game, especially if that baseline is longer and I can take a few steps back if I need to, then I'm gonna be on the 70 to 200 all the time because I can shoot all the way to the other end of the court. And when the action comes back towards me, I can take a couple steps back and I can film my side of the court. Whereas on a high school court where the baseline is smaller, the court is smaller, I can't always take steps back and if something gets too close to me I might be in trouble. I stand at half when I have to so that I can film both sides if I feel that's necessary and I mostly to stay on the baseline of the team who I'm interested in and focus on their half court game. I will switch out lenses just to get a different look if I feel like I've been shooting the same look for a long time because I do want a variety of footage when I'm going back to my editing bay but in general what I just described is how I choose my lenses when I'm filming sports. So for photography I usually like having a more zoomed in lens than when I'm shooting video i pretty much always use the 70 to 200 f4 this is a situation where i'm not as afraid to crank my iso up a little bit higher because i am shooting raw images which are much bigger than hd video this 4000 by 6000 image is going to be much more tolerant to high levels of noise because I'm going to take that large image and shrink it down to fit on Instagram and then it's going to get compressed. So it's really not that big of a deal if I bring my ISO a little bit higher than 3000, which is kind of where I like to keep it when I'm shooting HD video. When I'm shooting photos, the one thing that I make sure of is I always try to keep my shutter speed at 1 over 500. Normally to freeze motion of like somebody walking, your shutter speed needs to be like 1 over 200 or 1 over 250. But when you're filming sports, people are moving much faster than that. So I try to keep my shutter speed at 1 over 500. That way, when I take a picture of somebody, they are frozen there's no motion blur around them their edges around the subject are totally clean and i have a nice image that i'm actually proud to post online that is all the gear that i use to shoot sports videos on a regular basis and all the settings that i use for that gear if you found this video helpful then please give it a like drop a comment and let me know what gear you're using and what gear you want to get next also if you have any like specific settings that you use like my picture profiles that i really like i would love to hear what you use on a regular basis and we can have a discussion down there and subscribe for more content like this for videographers and video editors and yeah then we can keep learning together anyways that's gonna be all for today so until next time peace out